YouTube star Only in a Hellcat has been sentenced to five and a half years in federal prison in order to forfeit $30 million in his uh, fortune, right? So the YouTube star who built a sizable following with slickly produced videos flaunting his fleet of luxury and sports cars, collection of diamond encrusted bling, and his spacious Swedesboro home will be forced to give up nearly all of it after he was sentenced Tuesday to five and a half years in prison for the illegal business that allowed him to amass those trappings of success. Bill Omar Carasculo, better known to his more than 800,000 online followers as Omi and a Hellcat, pleaded guilty last year to running one of the most brazen and successful cable TV piracy schemes ever prosecuted by the U.S. government. As part of his sentencing Tuesday, he was ordered to forfeit more than $30 million in assets, including nearly $6 million in cash, cars including Lamborghinis, Porsches, Bentleys, and McLarens, and a portfolio of more than a dozen properties he'd amassed across Philadelphia and its suburbs. $30 million is a lot of money, but tangible objects aren't everything. U.S. District Judge Harvey Bartle III said in announcing the punishment during a hearing in federal court, You have a large following, and there may be people who think if you can get away with it, they can too. Omina Hellcat 36 apologized to his family, his employees, and the cable companies he cheated through his business, which illegally sold content hijacked from cable boxes to thousands of online subscribers, paying fees as low as $15 a month. I really didn't know the significance of this crime until I was picked up by the FBI at my home, he said. I feel like I let everybody down. But while prosecutors described Carsculo's crimes, which included counts of conspiracy, copyright infringement, fraud, money laundering, and tax evasion as serious, much of Tuesday's hearing focused on Omin Hellcat's remarkable rags to riches story. A product of North Philadelphia, he was raised as one of 38 children. Oh my god, 38 children? His mother was deported and died of an overdose when he was still a child. His father dealt drugs and trained Omin Hellcat, age 12, to cook crack cocaine. That's pretty messed up, right? Like, that's the problem. Like, if you are raised in a situation where you are pretty much already committing crime or crime is basically the norm for around you, for people that you look up to, it's not going to be unlikely that you're also going to be committing some form of crime in the future. Like, uh, that's sad to see. And by the way... I checked out some of Omi and Hellcat's videos, and the charisma that this guy has, the way he could talk to people, like, it's very, very hard to not like him. Like, he just has so much charisma. Which, by the way, even though he's, you know, going to serve, like, a good amount of time in prison, people are just going to love him. Because of his charisma. Like, they're just going to like him. He's going to do fine in there. Right? So he ping-ponged between relatives' homes and foster care, including a stint with one caretaker who intentionally had him committed to a mental health facility for access to prescription narcotics he could later sell on the streets. That's pretty horrible. He spent much of his teenage years and early 20s in and out of prison for drug and other offenses. Still, his attorney, Dante Mills, told the judge, once Omi and Hellcat swore off that life, he, without high school diploma and little financial support, was able to build a multi-million dollar business based on what at the time was considered cutting-edge technology in the entertainment field. The company launched in 2016 and known at various points by names like Gears TV and Gears Reloaded, was a leader among so-called illicit IPTV services 
a $1 billion a year industry in the United States. It provided its subscribers hundreds of on-demand movies and television shows, as well as access to dozens of live cable channels and pay-per-view events at cut-rate pricing, all of it stolen from legitimate services like Comcast, Verizon Fios, and DirecTV. Now, the crazy thing is, he was smart enough to create this massive scale of a business where he was making crazy amounts of money of it, like per day kind of thing. So when he gets out, there's technically nothing stopping him from creating a legitimate business that could scale up to this crazy level. And the thing is, he has enough people that like him that probably would be willing to help him out. So it provided its subscribers hundreds of on-demand movies and television shows as well as access to dozens of live cable channels and pay-per-view events at cut rate pricing. Oh oh yeah, I just just literally read the exact same thing. So the service provided widely successfully widely successful, attracting more than 100,000 subscribers and amassing more than $34 million in revenue by the time federal investigators shut it down in 2019. Wow. 100,000 subscribers paying about like $15 a month. Well, that's like 1.5 million, right? So, hold on, let's see. 100,000 subscribers paying 15 bucks a month. Yeah, 1.5 million. Okay, so 34 million divided by 1,500,000 equals. So he did this in about 22, 23 months. That's crazy. So in like under two years, he was able to generate $34 million. That's some impressive stuff. That is a crazy amount of money. So there's something to be said for someone who never had a chance but made one for themselves and who did everything in their power not to be that person they were expected to be, Mill said, that's Omar. And despite his guilty plea, Omi and Hellcat and his lawyer both suggested at various points during Tuesday's proceedings that Gears TV had at least initially operated within a legal gray area. Congress moved last year to more clearly define the type of business Omi and Hellcat ran as illegal, and Omi and Hellcat, well, Omi and videos posted to his YouTube channel over the last year has argued he'd legally paid for subscriptions to all the cable services whose content he was accused of pirating. In one, posted under the title, The FBI Seized Everything From Me, he likened what he did to inviting friends who don't have cable over to your home and taking up a collection to pay for a pay-per-view content. Oh, event. I'm only guilty of making money, he said in the video. I ain't guilty of nothing else. Prosecutors beg to differ. This was illegal the entire time, said Jason Gole, a senior attorney in the Justice Department Computer Crime and Intellectual Property Section. He noted he had made more money from his operation than virtually every other copyright defendant I've ever seen, adding, the message to the general public and his many, many fans is that this was a serious offense that should yield significant punishment. And as he stood before the judge Tuesday, he acknowledged he'd since had a change of heart, one inspired ironically by a television show produced by Disney, a company whose content he had been accused of stealing. He described viewing a behind-the-scenes documentary on Pixar and the work of thousands of employees that goes into making each of his animated films. Thinking about those workers and the millions it cost their employers to produce even a half-hour television show, he said he realized that he had not committed a victimless crime. He did not fight prosecutors' requests that he pay nearly $11 million in restitution to the cable companies and an additional $5.7 million to the IRS for unpaid taxes. And he swore that once released from prison, he intended to focus on his family and legitimate ventures like his YouTube channel and online 
marketing business, which by the way, he can make like potentially millions of dollars every single year due to the sheer size of his following. Like he has 800,000 people following his content. And even if like only a few thousand people end up sticking by him after everything's said and done, he can still make millions of dollars, legally speaking, still provide something to his fans, and be okay in his personal life as well. Which, here's the thing, like like I said, this guy's charisma is so off the chart that it's super hard to not like him. Like, I, I like the guy. Right, I really like the guy after watching a few of his videos. Like he's just a nice guy. At least that's how he's able to portray himself, which is cool to see. So also there was videos where he like recorded like right after the uh, the verdict and basically said that they had already pretty much gotten the restitution and the IRS payment basically that like they're already going to be like applied to it because I guess he already gave them money. So. That's also good too. So he's probably not really going to have to really pay for anything when he's in prison or even when he's out of prison. Like everything might be just completely paid off. He just has to do his time. Which if that's the case, if all of his fees and responsibilities financially speaking are already dealt with, then him getting out of prison would actually happen a lot sooner as well. Because they already made the money off of him. And he's so as Tuesday's hearing concluded, he paused to address the judge. This sentence, he said, saved my life. And I think the reason why he like said something like this is because I remember seeing a video of his where he talked about how he was getting like into like a really dark mental place, right? Because he was basically getting to the point where like he just couldn't really handle all the stress of everything because he's because he even said in like in one of the videos that he made he's like I'm okay with doing time as long as I know what is going to happen like I need to know what's going to happen because it's like it's the stress of like not knowing right and now he knows he's like okay I'm going to do this time but once it's done it's done he could go on Right, but for like the longest time, I think it was like years where he wasn't like knowing anything. Like literally, at any point, cops could just basically raid him and toss him into prison, or who knows what. Or he might end up getting into a confrontation with police that he doesn't want to, and it could end up really badly. So, to him, it ended better. Feel free to give your thoughts on this if you stumbled upon his stuff. Give your thoughts. Because again, I don't think I've ever really seen someone with the type of charisma that this guy has. So he's going to be fine in prison, out of prison. He's going to be able to make more money. Like the thing is, he's been repeatedly successful at generating money. The problem is, he's been repeatedly successful at generating money in a very illegal way. Or in illegal ways. So now he just has to focus on generating money in a very legal way once he's out. By the way, if you want to learn how to get out of debt, learn how I got out of debt and grew my net worth, go down below.